Luke chapter 12, verses 49 to 53. I have come to set fire on the earth, and how I wish it were already blazing. There is a baptism with which I must be baptized, and how great is my anguish until it is accomplished. Do you think that I have come to establish peace on the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now, in every household, there will be five, and they will be divided, three against two and two against three. Father will be divided against his son and his son against his father, a mother against her daughter and a daughter against her mother, and a mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. I have come to set fire on the earth or have come to bring fire to the earth. That's what Jesus said. He said, you think I've brought peace? No, I haven't. I've come with fire. Now, what does fire actually do? Fire separates things. Fire burns things. In Deuteronomy, I believe it's 4.24. Deuteronomy 4.24. Yes, it's the first time that Scripture tells us our God is a consuming fire. What does that mean? God is coming to burn and to prove us in the fire. What does that mean? To prove in the fire. It means you take out the gold, you sift out the gold, or you burn out the gold by burning the alloys. You separate the alloys from the gold. But to do this, it does take the pain and suffering of fire. That's what God says. So if you think it's going to be easy, it isn't going to be. Let's look at the universe. When Jesus says, I have come to bring fire on the earth and not peace, we think, well, that doesn't seem right. Jesus is supposed to bring peace and we look at the sky and we say, how nice, the beautiful stars and the sun and the moon, and we think, well, it's very peaceful out there. No, it isn't. The universe unlike what we think, is extraordinarily violent. Stars are born, stars grow, they explode into nebulae. And life is this way, even on our planet. We have a food chain. One species eats another. And we know that this is just part of life. Lao Tzu, a famous um, philosopher, born before Jesus Christ, he talked a lot about yin and yang, the darkness and the light. And these are not two separate things. In Christianity, we have a tendency to see things in a dualistic manner. We see darkness and light as two separate things. But yin and yang, and according to Lao Tzu, they are actually one thing, the, the, the dynamism of the universe, and it revolves. Yin and yang evolve. What does that mean? In the darkness, there is the light, and in the light, there is a darkness. In other words, as soon as a thing is born, its death appears. As soon as something is dying, its light appears. Just like ourselves, you know. Um, we grow old, we get full of wrinkles, and we know, well, it's going to be the end of our life. And we think, well, that's the end, and it, it doesn't look very pretty at the end. But actually, in the midst of that darkness, and many people have a hard time with death, in the midst of it is the light. And what's that light? It's eternal life. It's the light of life that we have for all eternity. And it begins in the darkness of our death. And that's what life is. Now, in a household, he says, in our household, in our community, we are going to be fighting, we are going to be arguing, because we're not yet there. And we have to go through this yin-yang process, most of which is a mystery to us, but it's very, very real. And we have to understand that things have to burn. Now, when we talk about darkness and light, we think about darkness as the alloy that has to burn. That would be matter. That would be, let's say, our economy. It would be our financial security. And we think, well, that's bad to, to work and to work for financial security and for our health. Like, you know, that's very selfish. No, it's not. We're supposed to do that. That's the first part of our evolution on this planet. At first, we have to establish ourselves. But there comes a second part to our life. And that's when fire has a second role. Let me read you Teilhard de Chardin. He's a philosopher and a geologist. He's a great scientist of the 20th century. And he says this, Someday, 
after mastering the winds and waves, the tides and gravity, we shall harness for God the energies of love, and then, for a second time, in the history of the world, man will discover fire. We will harness for God the energies of love, and then, for a second time, in the history of the world, man will have discovered fire. That's the second fire. That's the fire of the energies of love. And that only comes after death, suffering, pain. That's the only way that that gold appears. If we look at our life that way, and we have to understand, Jesus is not coming to bring peace. In a sense, he will bring peace. But he makes it very clear here, the peace only comes after we've gone through the pain and the suffering and the death. And he went ahead of us and showed us how it's done. And after we go through that in the yin-yang process, and the alloys are burnt away, then the gold will appear. But I want to make it very clear. Jesus never said, oh, these things are bad and we have to burn them. He never said that. He just said, I have come to bring fire on this earth, meaning I am going to come into your life and you will have to make some choices. And in those choices, you may have to let some things go. And it doesn't mean that those things are bad. They were okay maybe for a time and you had to build towards that. It's just like a child. You bring up a child and you give your heart and soul into it, but at some point you have to say goodbye. You have to let them go and be themselves. And that's true of everything in our life as human beings. Yes, we grow something and then we have to let it go. Even if it's a song, even if it's a painting, even if it's a corporation. We may build a corporation, but at some, day, at some point we have to say, I have to let it go for the second fire to appear. So let me put it this way. We are on this earth to evolve in love. There's the first part of love, just like we grow a child, the same way we build a corporation, the same thing we do with any relationship we have, but then comes the second fire, meaning can our love progress to the point that we will give up things, that we will let go of things, that we will let go of our life itself, if necessary, in order for the goal to emerge. That's the story of our life. And that's a challenge of our evolution on this earth. I have come to bring fire. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of conflict. Don't be afraid of suffering. Don't be afraid of even your own aggressiveness. It's something that you have to work through and after you work through it, when you work through that darkness, then will come the gold. And you will set the alloys aside. And those alloys are all the things you work for in this life. Just put it to one side and just the gold appears. That gold is the energy of love. And when you discovered unconditional love, that's the second gold. That is the gold. So let's end today by embracing the fire that Jesus brings upon the earth, the fire that he brings into your own heart. You don't need to go anywhere. Just look inside yourself. The fire is there. It's the energy of love that's within you. Go there and allow this fire to bring you to the second stage of your life where all the energies of love come into your life and you will discover fire for the second time in the history of your life. Unconditional love.